Another thing you will notice with this boat is that it has all these groove channels throughout the entire floor system of the boat. And this is just a way for it not to collect any water and for the water to run into the scupper holes. Now, with this boat, uh, it has a large, large uh, holding capacity. So you can basically plug up the scupper holes if you want to, or you can leave the scupper holes open. Uh, I personally have this particular model. I weigh about 225 pounds. I'm like 6'3". I don't plug any of the scup uh, scupper holes and there, are, there is no water that comes into the, in through the scupper holes into the boat. Something, uh, it's a good feature to know because most people, especially bigger fishermen like myself, like to carry a lot of gear. Once you put these into boats, you'll notice that water starts to come up, the boats become wet. That's not the case with the Old Town Predator. It's a very dry boat and with all of my gear and my weight, there is no water that comes up through those scupper holes. Now this particular boat, has the optional rudder kit on it, so you can steer with your feet up front. Um, you don't have to put a rudder on them. Some people like to, some people don't. But basically, here's your rudder system. It's pre it's uh, already pre-molded for the for the rudder system. So all you do is you can mount it yourself, or you can have your shop do it. The cables will come in. They'll run right through here, and they'll attach to the foot pedals and then that's how you steer your rudder, left to right with your foot pedals. Now if you decide that you don't want to paddle, if you decide that you don't want to paddle and you want to use an electric towing motor like a lot of people do these days, you can pick up a pretty inexpensive trolling motor bracket such as this one and the way that this will work is the boat is designed to accept these brackets and these are just regular canoe brackets, but you'll just tighten them down onto the rear of the boat, which is onto the same bracket that I showed you earlier. And you would attach your trolling motor onto the wooden bracket, and you're able to steer the trolling motor from the seating position. And then you're going to say, where do I put the battery? Well, the battery can go in one of two places. You can put the battery where I had the orange tackle box, which would be right here. Or you can put the battery right in front of the seat. Either way. You basically have your electric setup very inexpensively. You can use any transit mounted trolling motor on there, or you can buy a uh, specific short shaft kayak trolling motor that you can put on there. Very easy to work with. If you do decide that you're going to go this way, and you're going to have your trolling motor, your battery, and your gear, uh, plus let's say you're a big individual like myself, and you might have to plug up the scupper holes, you can use the new Ocean Kayak Old Town one-way valve. This is the one-way scupper right here. As you can see, it has a gasket around it. Uh, so it does allow water to seep back out, but does not allow water to come back in. With each uh, Predator 13, you get a set of nine of these. So you're able to plug up all the scupper holes that are in the boat if, if you so desire to do so. Um, and one last thing before we finish and show you the bottom of the boat is really the um, little storage compartment that is a um, compartment in the back of the seat. It has the grommets to allow the water to seep out. Um, I find this compartment extremely useful for my emergency first aid kit, which I keep into this compartment. So it's handy, it's handy if you need it, but it's out of the way. Sort of new to um, Old Town, but that's always your paddle rest. People always want to know what they do with their paddle. So with these boats, when you're fishing, pretty simple. You put it right into that little groove system. The paddle will stay out of your way. You can see the little indentations, and both, both model boats have the same one. If you're standing, you have a rear section one back here. And if you want to get totally, have the, have the paddle totally out of your way. So with every Predator, you have a, a little paddle clip that comes with it, mounts just like the ABS plastic, clip it right in place, you're all set. One uh, last thing on the uh, Predator MX-13 is the uh, through the hole transducer mount. As you can see from this cavity, it allows you to mount any of the uh, aftermarket or stock transducers onto this boat without having to drill or, or, or any other uh, object onto the boat. And it becomes a flush mounted transducer. So if you get this, the new side imaging or side scanning transducer, 
from either Hummingbird, it'll fit right into this cavity. If you get your smaller transit mounted transducer that comes with all your units, it will fit into this cavity right here. So it's a flush mounted installation that does not get caught on rocks. It does not get caught on any obstacles under the water. It gives you a clear reading plus water temperature. It's a great, great idea. You will not find this in any other boat on the market right now. Okay, so um, I'm now sitting in the Old Town Predator MX series boat. Basically, uh, the same hull, just slightly changed down the bottom for a little bit more of a maneuverable type boat, especially for moving water like rivers. Uh, and as you notice, the center pot on this boat uh, has been eliminated. You still have the same features and mountings that you do on the MX. One thing you'll notice, like I said, I was a pretty big individual. You will notice the amount of leg room that you have in this boat. And it's the same in the MX as it is in the Predator 13. So I have these foot braces all the way extended, my legs all the way extended, and I still can't touch the, uh, the footrest. So it gives you a lot, a lot of room, a lot of maneuverability as far as moving your legs, and a lot of stand-up room without having anything clutter in the middle. The Predator MX-13 and the Predator MX, which is about 12, 12 feet long, same amount of room in the middle. So um, back onto the MX, we have the same front hatch that we do in the um, 13, just slightly smaller, but still allows plenty of room to get in there and put a dry bag or put any kind of storage that you want to do in there. Same kind of lid, still secured to the boat, still locks in, locks in place. Okay, so here we are in the back section of the uh, Predator, and you will notice that the back section still has the same two um, recessed ABS plastic mounts that allow you to mount accessories onto it. You can also put that same holder that we had on the uh, 13. It will also fit in this position if you want to do put an electric trolling motor. Your rear cavity for your tackle box, slightly smaller, but still roomy enough to put a big tackle box in. <coughs> You still have room in the back for your um, plastic tackle box, or if you wanted to, if you did do an electric motor, you would still have room for your uh, trolling motor battery. You can also put your backs in this position, which is the same amount of room as in the other boat. So here we are, the bottom of the MX. This boat has a little bit more rocker than the Predator 13 and that's basically to give you the maneuverability on moving or faster moving water. But you can see the way the hole is configured to give you still a really good tracking boat. So that pretty much finishes up our little wrap up on the uh, new Old Town sit on top fishing kayaks. If there's anything that uh, you guys have a question about or anything that you felt that we missed, contact the store at paddlerscove.com. Uh, or you can call John directly. The phone number uh, is on their website. Once again, paddlerscove.com will give you all the information you need on the Old Town Predator sit-on-top fishing kayaks. See you out on the water.